Hello everyone, uh, I'm going to quickly present uh, a side project that I've developed recently. So I was pretty interested about game, uh, game development and also like game engines and how they work. So I decided to do some research on the topic and I took a course on 2D game dev. And as part of this course, you have to make your own game engine and that's pretty much the result of this course. This game engine in question that I'm going to be talking about and presenting like demoing today it was all made using modern C++, so C++ 17. That means we have lambdas, unique pointers, share pointers, like we have like smart pointers. Uh, we also have template programming and a bunch of other like more modern features that were released with C++ 11 and forward. Uh, in order to interact with, uh, the, in order to like draw things on the window, uh, we have SDL and SDL, which is the simple direct media layer will pretty much let us, uh, it, it will give us a renderer and we're going to be able to deal with textures and rendering sprites on the screen and all those things. SDL is pretty much, it's way simpler compared to OpenGL or other like more low level libraries. And that's why, and also it's very portable. It's portable between, portable between Linux, Windows and Mac OS. So that's why I decided to go with it. Uh, and finally, so this is the, the bulk of the, the engine. It's pretty much C++ and SDL. But then the engine itself also enables users to uh, do their own Lua scripts. And so pretty much the engine itself sits on C++, but then whenever you want to write gameplay code, uh, so like code for your actual game, then you, it, it's pretty much all done in Lua. And the advantage here is that C++ is all compi uh, compiled, right? That means that every single time you change something, you have to recompile and generate new binaries. In the case of this binding that we have between the engine with Lua, uh, users can create their own Lua script like with the gameplay and they don't have to reload uh, and recompile the engine all the time, which is pretty beneficial. So that, that's why we went with Lua there. Also a very popular option uh, for many like open source uh, engines out there. The engine itself was done using something called the Entity Component System. And it's pretty much a design pattern that envisions being more memory efficient. Uh, the way it works is in our engine, everything is an entity. So think of a game like a 2D game. Uh, the tiles on the back end, they are entities. Uh, the player is an entity. The projectiles that are flying on the screen, like maybe uh, an enemy is trying to attack you, to attack you, those are entities as well. Everything is pretty much an entity. Even something that is not visible on the screen can be an entity as well. And those, in terms of the actual code, they are represented by this struct that carries uh, an integer, right? So you can think of an entity as pretty much just an integer. Uh, then you have components, which are like structs, like C++ C structs that carry data, right? So you can have a sprite component, uh, you can have an audio component, and, 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 and it can have an animation component. And again, those components will actually carry information about what uh, you want to associate with the entity, right? So an entity will have multiple components. So for example, let's say I want to have a player on the screen. I will probably have an entity that will have a sprite component and this entity will also have a transform component. So uh, I know exactly how I'm going to move, uh, the, the, how, how the player is going to move and accelerate within the map and so on and so on. So entities have a, 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 a one to any relationship with components. And finally, and finally, now that we have uh, entities and components, we also have systems, right? So systems you can think of like, for example, the movement system. So the movement system will look at everything that has a sprite component and uh, let's say uh, a transform component. So in case an entity has those two components, the system will act on top of it and will change, change, the, uh, change the component data and let's say maybe move the character within the map, right? So that's pretty much the way it works. Again, entities have a bunch of components and uh, and systems operate on top of those comp entity components. And that's pretty much where it is. So jumping into the demo right now, let's see uh, how this, uh, this game actually works. It's gonna be a pretty quick demo. I'm gonna compile it and I'm gonna show like an example game using the engine. All right, so we have the repo here. Uh, I'm gonna leave, leave the GitHub link as well. Uh, the code is open source. Pretty much the first thing you need to do is install dependencies. This is a shell that will install all necessary dependencies here. So I'm gonna just run it really quick. And, oh, oops. 
There we go. Because I already have all of them installed, it uh, is going to be fairly quick. So let's just uh, get into it. So this step will pretty much install all necessary packages and binaries that our engine is going to use. Again, a very simple shell script and we can even navigate to it. We're going to see that, um, let me just open it really quick. It just pretty much installs SDL for us. It installs SDL image, true, uh, true type front, the SDL2 mixer, and Lua as well. And those are all the necessary dependencies for the project. Uh, besides that, it also makes sure you have uh, Brew installed. And it should be done in a second here. It's just updating some libraries. And after this installation process is done, we're then, we're then able to run this make file here. And this make file will be uh, the one responsible for compiling our engine. And again, our game as well. So both the game and the engine together. And for that, we're going to just use the make tool, which will read the make file and, and build everything for us. All right. All right, everything got installed. So now we should be able to run make build. And again, make build is running G++, just the C++ compiler. There's some flags here, warnings, all warnings, all uh, like show factor errors as well. We're using, S, um, using C++ 17 as our target here. We're including some libraries as well. And again, all we're linking to all those binaries that we just installed with Brew, and we're outputting this game engine uh, file here. Now we can also run game run make run, and that will run our game, and that's that's our game. So in our game, um, we can just move with our arrows here. And again, there are multiple entities in the screen right now, and we can shoot with the spacebar. And we have a health system connected to those entities as well. So we, whenever that their health reach, reaches out to zero, they disappear. There we go. And we also have uh, a debug manual. So if we click Control F1, we can see uh, the hitboxes for each character. So for my character and also for, for all enemies. And as we can see, as we're moving here, we're scrolling to see more of the map as well. And if I get hit here, my life decrements as well. And here on this like little uh, developer menu, I can actually uh, um, I can actually create new entities on the fly. So I can spawn new enemies. I can define what which type of texture the enemies should have, which type of position, which position should it be placed, and after I do that, it I can pretty much spin that uh, spin that enemy in the, in the map by spawn that enemy in the map by clicking spawn new enemy. And yeah, we also have the map coordinates and everything. And that's pretty much it. It's a very simple engine, very simple game. But again, it's all it's all done from scratch.